Oman, a land of myth and legend. Ancient trails of frankincense, unspoiled beaches, grand canyons, and genuine smiles. Fascinating blend of old and new. This is a journey into the present and the future of a nation that has a natural sense for moderation and elegance. The Sultanate of Oman occupies a vital strategic location, which has always been a major factor in determining its politics, options, and approach to a wide range of issues and developments. The Sultanate of Oman has a rich and varied history, from the ancient frankincense traders to the export of purebred Arab stallions, as recorded by Marco Polo in the 13th century. Situated as it is at a crossroads linking Asia, Africa and Europe, the Sultanate of Oman has been a center of trade, commerce and cultural exchange since antiquity, surrounded by the waters of the Gulf of Oman and the Arabian Sea. In times past, Oman served as one of the key gateways to the Arabian Peninsula. Located on the western flank of the entrance to the narrow Straits of Hormuz, the entrance to the Persian Gulf and the world's most important thoroughfare when it comes to the transport of oil and natural gas, modern-day Oman is no less a country of geopolitical and economic significance. Covering some 309,500 square kilometers of mountain, desert, and coastline at the southeastern tip of the Arabian Peninsula, to the north and west, Oman borders fellow Gulf Cooperation Council member states, the United Arab Emirates, and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. To the southwest lies the Republic of Yemen. Oman today has a fast-growing population of more than 3 million, more than 70% of whom live in urban areas. Friendly relations between Oman and the U.S. stretch back a long ways. It was during George Washington's presidency in 1790 that the first American ship, the Rambler, arrived at the Omani capital of Muscat. In 1834, that Oman and the U.S. signed their first treaty, establishing friendly diplomatic and trade relations that carry on to this day. It was during this period that Oman maintained a naval fleet considered one of the most powerful in history. Fast forward to the 20th century and the reign of His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Said Al Said, who has governed Oman since 1970 as both head of government and chief of state. Oman's last consultative assembly election was held on October 15, 2011. Some 520,000 Omanis were reported to have registered for the election, an increase of 388,000 from the previous election in 2007. Some 1,300 candidates stood for election, 77 of whom were women, the greatest number to date. Crafting and implementing a series of five-year national strategic development plans over the past four decades, Oman's economy has expanded every year but four, 1978, 1987, 1990, and 1999. Regaining momentum since being thrown off course by the banking crisis and global recession of 2009, Oman's GDP rose 4% in 2010 and 5.5% in 2011. Real GDP gained steam in 2012, increasing an additional 8.3% in 2012, according to Finance Minister Darwish Al-Balushi. Development and growth have posed challenges, however. Sultan Qaboos in spring 2011 announced plans to grant the bicameral legislature greater powers, establishing an ad hoc committee to amend the country's basic law to reflect this. Offering a more broad-based assessment of socioeconomic conditions and the quality of life, Oman scored 0 0.705, according to the UN Development Program's Human Development Indicators HDI, 2011 report, 90th of a total of 187 countries for which a wide range of comparable data are compiled, higher than the 0 .641 average HDI score for the Arab states region. As summarized in the BTI 2012 Oman report, Oman's eighth five-year plan, 2011 through 2015, presented in November 2010, concentrates on economic diversification, the creation of jobs for Omanis, the encouragement of foreign investment, and an expansion of the private sector's role as the key components of the move toward a post-oil economy. State 
state-run and sponsored oil and gas companies and investments are the major players in the Omani economy and have driven the course of the country's socioeconomic development. Continuing efforts to support and encourage international investment in the oil and gas sector, Oman's Ministry of Oil and Gas in 2009 signed production sharing agreements with four international oil companies. As of year end 2009, 22 companies were involved in oil and gas exploration and production across 32 concession areas, employing and training Omanis, making use of local resources, and contributing to local communities and the country's social and economic development. The oil and gas sector in Oman is, uh, is open to all international companies and we have currently more than 18 uh, companies from all over the world. Normally we have a tendering process. Whenever there is a new block is open in the oil and gas uh, sector, we tender it and then the companies compete. Everyone submits its proposal and based on the terms that they submit, we, the best terms the best proposal, we allocate that uh, block. So there's no really preconditions, there's no restrictions, there's no limitations. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, Occidental Petroleum has the largest presence of any foreign firm and is the second largest oil producer in Oman. Other major players include Shell, Total, Partex, BP, CNPC, Cogas, and Repsol. Crude oil production in Oman is increasingly reliant on enhanced oil recovery techniques and technology, a field in which Oman is considered a regional pioneer. Having launched a nationwide EOR program in 2002, completion of the Harwheel Enhanced Oil Recovery Project is expected to add around 30,000 BPD to Oman's crude oil production in 2012. Oman is a small producer in the international market. Uh, we produce about 900 and 30,000 barrels a day of, of crude, and we produce uh, about 100 million cubic uh, meter of gas daily. There is an increasing demand uh, for uh, oil and gas, and especially for gas, because it became now the, the preferred source of energy, it's uh, cleaner energy, and uh, we find that increased demand locally. And uh, because we are also having a limited reserve, uh, we so far, we have not been able to allocate all the gas demand has been asked for. Our priority is to fulfill the commitment which has been signed in the past. We are working hard, of course, in the exploration front, and that's why we attract uh, international investors, international companies with the new technologies, with new know-how, because also with time, uh, technology improves and uh, reserve which used to be very difficult to extract and to produce will become uh, accessible and you can produce it economically and feasibly. And that's what we have seen so far. Uh, we, we are developing many fields in the oil and gas and especially in the gas because I said maybe the, the demand is higher especially locally for, for gas and uh, we have made so many success in this area. U.S. companies already working in Oman now and they are playing a very important role in the current time. The sector, as I said, it's open and we welcome uh, the American companies to come and invest and, and, and introduce themselves to the, to the oil and gas uh, sector in Oman. There's a lot of opportunities. We spend on an annual basis about $10 billion in the upstream only. There is a scope for any new technology, we welcome it because at the end of the day we're looking for to improve efficiency and productivity of the sector. And I think there, there is a lot of new technologies apply in the states that can be transferred and apply in Oman as well. Braj Energy Services, the Omani specialist in well drilling, well engineering, and well services. This dynamic enterprise, fully owned by Oman Oil Company, was launched in 2007 with only four rigs. Braj Energy Services now has 13 rigs and has built up its workforce of over 1,400 Omani employees. Having completed drilling programs in Oman and in the UAE, 
Abraj Energy Services now plans to export its expertise throughout the Middle East and North Africa region. Abraj Energy Services aims to ensure safe, incident-free operations and customer satisfaction by utilizing talented, motivated and highly experienced manpower, the finest equipment and the most innovative technologies. Abraj Energy Services, born in Oman and now bringing world-class oil and gas services to customers in Oman and beyond. CC Energy Development, SAL, CCED, serves as a benchmark in Oman's petroleum sector. The upstream oil and gas exploration and production company acquired blocks 3 and 4 in Oman, which had been unsuccessfully drilled by other companies for 40 years, and managed to discover and produce oil there. Today, CCED has grown to become Oman's fourth biggest oil producer. In addition to making a major contribution to the Omani economy, CCED is committed to giving back to the communities where it operates. The company welcomes international partnerships as it pursues its ambitious goals. Looking to the future, CCED will continue to play a key role in driving forward Oman's high potential oil and gas sector. CC Energy Development the innovative Omani oil and gas enterprise. Midwest Oil Field Services has built a strong track record of providing drilling services and solutions to global oil operators in Oman. With over 900 wells successfully completed, Midwest Oil Field Services ensures delivery of services and solutions on time, in a safe and controlled manner, conforming to local government regulations ISO 9001, 14001 and 18001 standards. Midwest Oil Field Services, your partner of choice in Oman. Dalil Petroleum is helping to make sure Oman's hydrocarbon resources are exploited responsibly. Operating in Block 5, Dalil Petroleum is a joint venture project under the direction of the Omani government. Thanks to its advanced technologies, optimized processes and dedicated human resources, Dalil Petroleum creating value and long-term benefits for the people of Oman. Developing private sector industry and commerce is an important feature of Oman's long-term development strategy, ranking second only to oil and gas as the most important segment of the national economy. By 2020, Oman's industrial sector is expected to contribute 15% to national gross domestic product, up from 3.5% in 1992. Import substitution was the main aim of the Omani government's industrial development strategy during the 1970s and 1980s. That shifted in the 1990s toward encouraging development of exports for the GCC market. Developing a healthy, capable private sector and creating an environment conducive to foreign investment are seen as key facets of realizing this goal. Foreign direct investment in Oman's industrial sector rose to exceed RO5 billion, about USD 13 billion, as of year end 2009, an increase of 128.7% from 2006. Oman has grown in the past 40 years under the leadership of His Majesty uh, the Sultan of Oman and still continue to be developed. Uh, it is, they are uh, basically building roads and developing uh, highways and uh, buildings and uh, bringing new industries into the country and they're creating an atmosphere for the foreign in investment. It's a beautiful place, the sea and the mountain and the desert makes a beautiful setup for the living and bringing the children up in this area. So it is, uh, it is quite a bit of opportunity for the people to come. Construction of industrial estates has been a core aspect of implementing Oman's industrial development strategy. Completed in the mid-1980s, the first, Ar Rasail, 15 kilometers from As Sib International Airport, is home to some 60 enterprises, a wide variety of manufacturing companies that produce everything from soap and crackers to cement and copper cathodes. 
On a smaller scale, the Omani government is also studying the feasibility of establishing cottage industries that would produce traditional items, such as pottery, rosewater, and frankincense. The security, the stability, uh, the education for the children, uh, they're all uh, available. And that is what most people think of when they want to go to another place uh, to live. Samawa Macaroni Company, named Best Factory in Oman in 2011 and 2012, provides world-class pasta products for Africa, the Middle East, and other global markets. Salala Macaroni collaborates with B2B business partners to develop value-added in-house pasta brands, employing the latest international equipment and technologies and the highest global standards. Salala Macaroni Company, we are passionate about our pasta. The Omani government, in line with its intention to further develop and diversify the country's economic base, in December 1999, launched an initiative to restructure and privatize its electricity and water sectors. Guided by policies and regulated by the Authority for Electricity Regulation, young independent power and water companies spun off from the mining of housing electricity and water are now focused on developing new markets for electricity and water, as well as looking to change the composition of the power sector's generation mix. The law was for the regulation and privatization, so it did map out the, the future privatization of the sector. But as of now, the only segment within the overall electricity sector which has been privatized is the generation sector. So the benefits from, from that we see within the generation sector specifically with the inclusion of international participants is, is exceptional. I mean, the interest that's there, quality of operation post-bid once the, once the plants get commissioned, the competitiveness of that we, we get and we analyze, the uh, transfer of technical know-how to, to the local participants, it's, except, it's doing exceptionally well and we hope that these benefits that the government sees from the privatization of the generation sector is then going to flow into the privatization of the rest of the electricity sector. So privatization and its benefits are now only zoned into the uh, generation sector but the law did enable and facilitate privatization to then occur in other segments of the electricity market. Power demand peaks in summer, having reached 2,614 megawatts in 2006 and 2,773 megawatts in 2007. The residential sector typically consumes more than half of Oman's total annual energy production. Energy consumption in the industrial sector is the fastest growing, however, registering an annual growth rate of 14.4% in comparison to non-industrial sectors, which have grown at a 6.3% rate in recent years. So the Power and Water Procurement Company, which is the licensee, uh, has the statutory responsibility to ensure that there is enough capacity to meet demand. And how do they go about it? They go about it by issuing a seven-year statement. And what the seven-year statement does, and they have, they have an obligation as per their license to submit it to us as the authority for its approval, it lists out their forecast based on security of supply, uh, a security of supply analysis and a probabilistic um, uh, planning mechanism where they ensure that there is what would be the forecast for the next seven years. There is rapid growth in our mind. I mean, this year and, and for the coming years, we're seeing double-digit growth. It means that there will be a need for capacity, continuous need for capacity. So that responsibility has been given to the Power and Water Procurement Company, which is one of the entities that we regulate. So through the law, through the license, we have an obligation to ensure that there is enough capacity to meet the rapidly increasing growth. Wholly reliant on fossil fuel resources, primarily natural gas, to generate electrical power, Oman is increasingly looking toward development of renewable energy in order to meet current and future challenges. So 100% of our energy generated at this point in time is from gas, but in the rural areas it's been generated by diesel generation. So we have a completely undiversified portfolio of energy mix right now and the risks of of that are well known. So we do need to have a diversified uh, fuel mix and uh, renewable energy is becoming more, it's factoring in more and more prominently in our planning. And the authority, authority recently has approved a policy whereby renewable energy 
must be taken into consideration by the rural areas electricity company in any new project that it undertakes in the rural areas. We did publish a study in 2008 which said that there is vast resources for both solar and wind in, wind in Oman. And what we are doing right now within our jurisdiction as the Authority for Electricity Regulation is ensuring that within small scale projects, they need to integrate renewable. But within the large scale, there needs to be an overall energy policy and renewable energy must be within that policy. Developing its renewable energy resources potential figures to play an increasingly important role in Oman's strategic development. Oman enjoys sunny weather throughout the year, as well as seasonal monsoon winds, conditions that Oman's government recognizes can be used to generate clean, renewable electrical power that can be used across society, including in isolated rural areas and to desalinate seawater. And uh, we have been using renewables now on a trial basis for uh, to supply some of our uh, energy needs. Like we have now started a pilot to produce steam from solar, which is uh, maybe a unique uh, in this area. And it's been so far successful and uh, we are trying to uh, widen the application of this uh, project to other areas in, uh, in our operation. So we, we look at it positively and we encourage also, even though it's not under the domain of our ministry, but in our operation we are trying to encourage companies to use renewables for their own operation. There can be companies from the U.S. contacting the renewable, uh, the rural areas electricity company and providing them with solutions for these small areas where they can actually submit bids for these small scale projects which probably would interest the rural areas uh, company and they can take that into consideration and, and uh, work to implement these small projects. There's a huge amount of investment that we've approved, but we do realize that there has to be the technical capabilities of these companies. And uh, companies such as the ones we have currently in the sector, they can use the experience, the international experience where companies with, with, with uh, the technical know-how from the US in supply and distribution can actually tie up as a knowledge, as, as, a, as a management, uh, uh, management sharing type of technology, technology sharing type of uh, arrangement with these companies where they can, they can tie up and, and ensure that these companies have the assistance as and when needed for a rapidly go growing uh, network. A civilization exceeds 3,000 years under and above ground yet to be explored. Suhar is the city of Sinbad and Ahmed bin Magid, explorers and businessmen. Suhar has the ingredients of nature, sea, plains, valleys, and mountains. It is 200 kilometers from Muscat and Dubai. Sometimes fishing, mountains and palm trees climbing, golfing, bowling, Nordic walking, and more are awaiting for you. So does electricity at your disposal around the clock. Should you wish to have a traditional Omani wedding ceremony for new or renew, hotels will provide. Oman's world-class electricity provider, Majan Electricity, supplies electrical power to government facilities, private residences, businesses. Majan Electricity is well known for its international standards, security, and reliability. Highly trained employees, attractive cost, support for renewable energy, demand-side management, environment, and strong commitment to corporate social responsibility programs. In May 2013, Mahjan Electricity opened its state-of-the-art green building headquarters in Sohar, one of the fastest growing industrial hubs and tourism destinations in the Middle East. With its cutting edge port and high quality of life, free zone, Sohar is a key driver of the Omani economy. As more and more local and international investors and companies set up operations in Sohar, Sohar is geared up for your investment business. Welcome to Sohar. 
Oman Electricity Transmission Company occupies a unique position within the Oman energy sector by transmitting electricity from the points of generation to the loads centers throughout Oman. OETC is committed to delivering outstanding services through the reliable, safe and secure transmission and economic dispatching of electricity with a focus on the environment and sustainability. OETC supporting the ongoing development of Oman. Rural Areas Electricity Company, the innovative, reliable, cost-effective supplier of electricity and drinking water to Oman's rural Musandam, Alwusta, Masira, and Dofar governates. This fast-growing enterprise, founded in 2005, was recently named the number one company in the Middle East in leadership. It has been doubling its capacity every four years and currently operates 52 power plants and six desalination plants. Creating jobs for Omanis is another goal for Rural Areas Electricity, which has achieved a 92% Omanization rate. The company places a high priority on staff training and operates its generation facilities, production plants, and distribution networks in a safe and environmentally responsible manner. Rural Areas Electricity Company lives up to its motto, Sustainable Energy, Community Values. Since His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Said first came to power in 1970, his mission has been well defined, to set Oman and its people on the way to progress and prosperity. For the past four decades, Oman has emerged as a viable, vital 21st century state. With foresight and dedication, the Sultanate has become an important player within the Gulf region and the wider world beyond. Today, Oman is crisscrossed by multi-lane highways, which ensure that the country is fully accessible, both physically and technologically, to the rest of the world. While decades ago, Oman was totally dependent on the revenues from its oil and the expertise of foreign labor, today, it has achieved enviable success in its aims towards diversification and Omanization. The firm principles on which such developments were made under the wise leadership of Sultan Qaboos are destined to continue into the future and with them Oman's stature in the international community as a positive force for peace and progress at home and abroad. From the ancient frankincense and horse traders to the modern economic zones, ports and airports, from green wadis to the endless desert dunes, we give you Oman.